In our video overview of the HTTP protocol, we learned that the first line in a response header contains a three-digit code indicating the status of that response. We learned that 200 is an OK message, and 404 means that the resource we were looking for was not found. Now let's take a quick look at the other status codes that could be returned in an HTTP response. There are five categories of HTTP status codes. 100 level messages are informational. 200s indicate success. 300 level messages deal with redirection. 400s deal with client errors. And finally, 500 errors are server errors. The 100 level errors are pretty rarely used, I think. I haven't really seen them in practice myself. Um, for a continue message, you actually have to, in your request, ask for a continue. The server is then supposed to check the headers, verify that they're fine, and tell the client to go ahead and continue with the request. And the 101 is for switching with the upgrade command to a different protocol. This is something that is probably going to come into play more as we start using WebSockets because you can use the upgrade command to switch from HTTP to the WebSockets protocol, which is an advanced protocol that we're not going to cover in this class. As I've mentioned several times before, 200 is the most frequent response, indicates that everything was okay and is the normal response. The rest of the 200 level messages are different ways of returning uh, basically an OK type message. I don't see the use for a lot of these in applications that I would work on. However, if I were writing an API, I would say 200 definitely. Uh, 201 is a good response when you, re when you created a resource at the end of a request. And 204 is a good response for when there is no data returned, but the response otherwise worked fine. 300 level status codes deal with redirection. A uh, very common code is 301, move permanently. If you change a URI and want people to be able to still use that old URI to reach the, new res the resource in its new location, then you would set up a 301 permanent redirect. 302 found is similar, but the resource has been moved temporarily. The browser should, or the client should on the next attempt, try again from the original address and not consider that it's been a permanent change. 304 is a very useful header in proxy situations because it tells you that the content has not been modified since the client last retrieved it. And therefore, the proxies can make a request that says, here's the last time I got this information. And the server can say, yeah, it hasn't changed, so you don't need to retrieve it again. Go ahead and use your cache copy. And then 307 move temporarily is very similar to a 302 message, but it has some added enhancements for HTTP 1.1 clients. There are several other 300 codes, but these are the most common, and I didn't feel the need to cover all of them. 400 level codes are also very common, and they indicate that there was some kind of problem with the client's request. A 400 error is simply a bad request, and the client should not retry it without making some kind of fix. A 401 error is unauthorized, and this should return with an authentication challenge. That will then cause the client to respond. If the client is a web browser, it will usually pop up a login form at that point, or otherwise respond in such a way that, um, that the user is, is prompted to authenticate before they continue. 402 payment required is for future use, and as far as I know, it has not been implemented yet. 403 forbidden is similar to unauthorized. However, it indicates that authorization will not help. For example, the user is already logged in, but they do not have permission to the thing that they asked for anyway. And again, the request should not be repeated because it's going to return with the same result next time. 404 not found is common for when a resource has been removed or it has been moved and there was no redirect made for it, but it can also be used to hide the real reason for refusing a request. If for security purposes, you don't want to even indicate that a hidden resource is available unless the user is authorized to get it, 
you may choose to return a 404 instead of a 401 or a 403 in that case. And 410 gone is really the better way to handle things when you remove things. 404 doesn't really specify why a resource is no longer available. However, 410 gone specifically says this resource has been permanently removed and please don't try to look for it anymore. Like the 300 series, there are some additional codes that I didn't include here, but the ones that I've shown are the most common ones. There used to be a lot of talk about the fact that 418, I'm a teapot, was a valid client error response code. However, this was really just an April Fool's joke from 1998. Sometimes I think this gets mixed up with something that really did happen. In 1982, a group of students at Carnegie Mellon did connect a Coke machine to the internet. Before the web was created, early interfaces used different protocols to communicate with this Coke machine, and those were replaced with web protocols in the mid-1990s. And if you're interested, I've included several links in the, in the slideshow here that you can find out more information about the original 418 April Fool's joke and about the Internet Coke machine. 500 status codes are really kind of bad for the client because the only place they can get fixed is on the server. 500 is just a general uh, internal service error. That usually means that the application running crashed and there generally is, you know, sometimes you'll see that error message displayed to the client, but for security purposes, it's really not a good idea to explain why an error occurred, but only that an error occur occurred. In this case, the developer will have to go back through the server logs to figure out what the error was. 501 not, not implemented basically means that whatever the client asked for, the server doesn't know how to give it. 502 bad gateway. This is a code that, that ties to proxies. And um, that can include internal proxies, the Apache web server and, the, um, and IIS. Both can kind of act as a proxy and return some of their pages from another backend server or from CGI gateway scripts or things of that nature. And the 502 indicates either way that the server that they really need to be able to reach to continue this request is not available. 503 means that the service is unavailable. Um, that's a little bit different than some of the other things because this is something you can do intentionally. If you want to maintain your server for any reason, you can set a 503 response and that indicates that the server is under maintenance. It will be back eventually. And in the meantime, one of the things that happens is search engine crawlers do not log any responses that come from a server when they have a 503 attached to them. So it's a good way to do maintenance on your server without messing up search engine results. 504 gateway timeout. Again, that typically is a proxy thing where the, the gateway times out trying to talk to the backend server. And then before the client itself times out, that proxy will send a message back to the client. And lastly, 505 HTTP version not supported. That is just telling the... Um, I was telling the client that whatever HTTP version it asked for, it can't, it can't do it. That was a relatively short list, and that wraps up our review of HTTP status codes. Thanks for watching.